Hey everybody, this is Matthias Forsman with TigerStop. Today we're going to show how to create a custom TigerLink 6 profile, how to create jobs with that profile, how to download those jobs using a standard controller and using Tiger Touch. Lastly, we'll show how to add an image. First thing we want to do is take a look at TigerLink 6 as it exists when downloaded. When you download TigerLink 6, it joins your startup apps and will start when your computer does. It lives in the system tray in the bottom right corner of your screen. We're going to open TigerLink 6. These are all of the profiles that natively are installed with the program. This box shows any Tiger Stop that's on your network that's connected through TigerLink 6. It's important to note any Tiger Stop on that network needs to be on the same subnet as this computer. The AutoLink box will be checked upon install. I like to uncheck that if I'm using Tiger Touch or I'm not connecting directly to a Tiger Stop. Let's take a look at the basic profile before we edit it. Under Style, you can see that this list is set up as a push feed list. And we can change that here from a push, pull, set point, or pattern list. These are the sort columns. We'll look at how those work later on in this video. But you can see that this also shows that this basic profile has 10 columns that it uses. This checkbox shows that this is an optimized list. You can uncheck that if you don't want to use our dynamic optimizer. Over here we have the print fields. We'll show how to edit those here in just a little bit. Now I'm going to shut down TigerLink 6 because I don't want it running in the background when I go to this next step. Open any folder, go to the address bar, and type in percent, app data, percent, and press enter. This will take you to the roaming folder. In the roaming folder, we want to go to the TigerLink 6 folder and look up our cutlist links file. Now, I'm going to open this with Notepad++, but Notepad works just as well. It's a good idea to open any source CSV file that you want to use while editing. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the cut list that we're basing this profile off of. The basic needs for a TigerLink 6 cut list is just having a length and a quantity. Any other column that you have will be for sorting, print labels, or can be unused if you need them for other parts of your operation. A couple of things to note. You will not want any characters or information on the outside of the columns. These are the columns that are outside or beyond the data that you're using for your cut list. It's important to know where you want to start pulling data from. So you can see that we want to actually start pulling data from row two in this cut list. You also want to make sure that you don't have any strange characters or odd symbols that are in your fields. Also make sure not to have any commas in your list as TigerLink 6 will view that as a separate column. Now that we're familiar with this cut list, let's go over back to our cut list links. And the first thing that we want to take a look at is the link name. So that says basic now, and I want to go ahead and change that. I'm going to change that to Packsaw. You can change that to whatever you like. We look at the extension file. This is going to be a .csv file, and then we look over at the columns. So the basic profile has 10 columns whereas we are only using six for this particular list. So you've got your style here and you can edit this here, but it is much easier to edit from the other interface that we showed earlier. Now, if you're using metric, you want to change the, this field here from English to metric. Here you can add in a head and tail cut if you like. I'm going to go ahead and change these. Now this will affect every list that uses this custom profile. So the data row starts off 2, which is great because that happens to be where we want to start pulling data from. I have seen lists where the data starts much lower or even on the first row, but that's not for this one. Uh, next we're going to go to the length and edit those to match our cut list and the quantity columns. That's really all that we want to do in this particular interface. We're going to save it and close that out. Now we want to open up TigerLink 6 again. 
and we're going to open up the interface. First thing that we can note is that the profile name has changed to Paxaw. All of these profiles are checked, meaning that they're active, so you can uncheck those if you don't want to use them. I'm going to go ahead and leave these active because they serve a purpose for me later. Now we want to close the cut list that we're using so that we can pull it out of our TigerLink file. Um, if you don't have it in there, you don't have to worry about closing it. So now we're going to open that back up again and edit our custom profile that we just made. So we're going to leave this a push and we're going to uncheck the sort columns. So typically you sort by dimension, material, color, that sort of thing. Um, so with this particular list, we want to sort by our dimension and our material. So that is column three and column six. Now we're going to go over to our print fields. So you can move these fields around as you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the field and edit. I'm going to change the header name for this to jobs. And we'll note that the jobs field is in column D, so that's number four. And I'm going to change the font size to 16 and hit apply. Now you can see that by changing the font size, that actually changed the size of the print field there. So we'll go to material next. We'll edit that in a similar way. So that's column six and we'll hit apply. Lastly, we're going to edit for the part. Now, typically we tell people that they can have about five fields on their label. I've seen people get more by being creative with the placement and with their, with their characters. So here I just wanted to quickly show you that you can print out as a barcode as well. That's one of the fonts that you can choose. Uh, we're not going to do that for this particular profile. So we hit apply to close. And we're going to go ahead and minimize TigerLink 6. And we're going to double check that it's still active down in the system tray. A lot of people close TigerLink 6 and then this won't actually work if the program is not running. It's important where we drop this file. You can see that this folder has serial numbered files as well as a global folder. So the serial numbers will drop in if we want to send to a, to a specific Tiger Stop and the global folder will go to any Tiger Stop on your network. Now you'll note that I've got a selection up there and that's because two profiles have the same columns. So once we drop the list into the folder, you can see that it's created four jobs based on the sort fields that we selected. Now these jobs will be either available for download through a controller if they were in one of the folders that are serial numbered or the global folder or we can download them to Tiger Touch. So let's take a look at what it looks like to download from a Tiger Stop controller. So first thing we want to do is press the D button for show, D button for list, and D button for download. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can download. That's work order local, primary local, work order global, and primary global. I like to use the global folder. So this is how your lists look on the controller. We're going to use the blue buttons at the top to walk that list. And once we have the list that we want to grab, we go ahead and hit D to grab it. Now it's going to download and ask us which position we would like or destination we would like to put this list. So I'm just going to use five here. You've got one through 99 that you can use. Now you can start the list once it's downloaded or you can save it for later. You can always download lists on top of old lists as well. Now we're going to show what this looks like using Tiger Touch. Now I don't have any Tiger Stop that I'm connected to, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, now you can load three separate lists if you'd like, but I'm just going to load one for now. So going into my Tiger Link file. There are the cut lists that are available. I select the one that I want. 
So this is what your operator is going to see. Down in the bottom corner, we've got the 2x4 pine that's showing what material it is, and then we can look at the total material length needed for this job. So your operator will know exactly how much and what to grab for processing. We can edit the list here, check or uncheck the optimized pack panel group matching. Group matching is a parameter for pack dynamic pack optimization. We're not going to use that here, but we'll keep it checked and press OK. I've also put an image down in the bottom right corner here. This is usually used for aluminum profiles or things of that nature to show exactly what your operator needs to be grabbing. I'll show you how to add that image in here in a second. So really what you want to do is name that image after whatever field you have in your sort columns such as 2x4 for this and you want to go back into your roaming folder and this time we're going to go into Tiger Touch image and throw those files into the folder. Once those are in there, anytime you open up that associated cut list, then that image will show up in the bottom right corner. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please contact us at service at tigerstop.com. Thank you.